to you all. Today I'm going to talk about uh, today I'm going to talk about the poem Two's Company. So basically, Two's Company is a humor poem, and it was written by Raymond Wilson. Actually, actually, Raymond Wilson is a well-known American author of many publications, articles in many learned journals, and he was a professor of history in his own university in Kansas, and he has won many awards and many honors for his writing and university teaching. So the poem satires people who are sure that there was no things like as ghosts and the impossible and un unbelievable things. So the poem comes from the contrast between the what he says at the beginning and what he says as and later part of the poem. So the main character he decided to spend the night in a haunted house just to prove his friends that there was no such a things like ghost. But as night falls, strange things happen which threaten him. The way he tries to convince himself that there are, there are no ghosts. So this is a summary of the poem and let's analyze the poem according to it. So the poem starts the, with an introductory line and itself, it is a kind of warning on what is the, it is going to happen to the man, that the sad story of a man who didn't believe in ghosts. So, from this warning, we can think that this is a story of a, a person who is uh, who didn't believe in ghosts, and this is a sad story. So, so it creates some mood in the readers. And according to the structure of the poem, we can divide this poem into a into four stanzas. So, the first stanza is they said that the house was haunted, but he laughed at them. And say tut tut, I never heard such tattle tattle as ghosts that groan and chase that tattle. And just to prove I am in the right, please leave me here to spend the night. So that this is this total disbeliever in ghosts further takes up the challenge of spending night in a night in a haunted house. So the main character he is very critical and sarcastic towards the ideas of a ghost. He's, there are many people in our society who either disbelieve ghost stories or show off that they do not fear ghosts, no believe in such stories. So sometimes people challenge each other to prove themselves in a group. Naturally, we can find this kind of behavior in youth. And here the poet has mentioned the brave person who never believed in ghosts as, as he, and as well as he has also mentioned the society or the youth people as they in the first Sensor. So let's see the second sensor. They, they let him just to dusk was falling with a hunchback moon and screech owls calling. But what is that? Outside it screamed as as a chain saddle summer scream. So here the poet illustrates the scene, bringing visual images to the scene. The environment foreshadows the imminent horror that he is going to face. Thus, the reader gets ready to face, uh, experience something sad or fearsome. So it creates a fearsome mood in the readers. And the behavior of other shows that they know something that the challenger does not know. So they are quite happy that he's going to learn some uh, lesson. So on the other hand, the hero is happy that he has a sacred, he is, has a scar mission to fight against super situation. So to make a curiosity in readers, the poet has mentioned hunchback moon and screech of scoring. So usually hunchback moon is a metaphor and usually these elements are seen mostly in the ghostful environment. So whenever we take a movie of a ghost, we can see these sound effects and hunchback moon and screech of owls and some strange noises. So it's a basic elements of the ghost society and we can take as a basic element for the structure for the ghost environment. So here the point is quite significant in making the scenery of a ghost. So I think there's third sensor, but what is that outside is it seemed as it changed after someone scream, come come, it is merely nerves he's certain, but just the same he draws the curtain the stroke of 12, but there's no clock 
he shuts the door and turns back turns the lock of course he knows that no one's there but no harm's done by taking care so intervention of the poet involves a reader create suspense he asks questions from the readers to company listen to them so it is quite dramatic that the poet introduced the behavior of the hero within brackets just like as you see in the drama drama script which evokes humor that but just the same he draws a curtain of course he knows that there is no one so his behavior is exactly shows the fighting state of mind that shows the reality of the most in society although everyone knows that there is no such thing called ghost everybody fears the devil in the dark cave and more only the writer has also used the scenarios of the ghost world so environment in this sense also that the stroke of 12 and shuts the door and Draws a curtain, though. so it's a scenery of a environment which has a ghostful society. And when we see the last stanza of this poem, someone's outside the silly joker. He may as well pick up the poker. Uh, that noise again. He seeks the door, shutter the windows, make a pause to seek the safest place to hide. The cupboard storm. He creeps inside. Not that there is anything to fear. He tells himself when at his ear. A voice breathes softly. How do you do? I'm ghost. Pray who you are. So although although the challenger knows that there is nothing to fear, he arms himself with a poker hiding under a cupboard. The end is quite ironic to the subheading where the reader expects a sad ending, but it finds humor. The actions, behavior, and utterance evokes humor, just like in a watching a humorous movie. The introduction of the ghost is rather. gentleman like and deepening the humor the poet has you mentioned uh, as a voice breath that he has personified the voice by giving it it the human behavior of breathing and let's analyze the themes of the poem that the first theme of the poem is human weakness that the poem seems to be laughing at the human weakness through the humor that he laughs at the quality of overestimation of us in the poem that the poem the poem Poet mentions that overestimation of themselves as a great weakness for human beings. For this purpose, the poet has used the material of concept of ghost. So, according to society, ghosts are usually believed as a great fear for the humans, and the poet mentions this weakness through the mentioning of brave who has no ideals on ghost. Then the poet has also talked about the dual nature of human being. even though the man is afraid of ghost he has mentioned him as a brave man and he didn't believe in ghost so normally there are many people in our society who are just covering their weakness by showing their showing them as bravery people so the from this poem the poet has blasted the purpose and ideas of the, of such people in the society so this theme also can be taken as the same theme of the appearance appearance as reality that they are covering their reality by their appearance so we can also judge at people by their appearance so after analyzing these themes of the story of the poem we can catch some ideas about the techniques of this poem that the writer has used to to talk about to light to give more light to the poem that here the title is ironic that he does not expect a ghost as a company and subtitle is ironically misleading the reader to read a sad story yet they will find a humorous story so in the whole poem the poet narrates the story in a humorous tone and he also creates a creepy and a humorous mood in the readers the poet has also used the taking of onomatopoeia in dictions uh, of tattle tattle tat tat groan rattle by this uh, he creates a um, creepy and creepy sound effect to the readers and the whole poem is in a narrative style and the narration flows smoothly with a regular sequence of incidents and also the writer creates some visual imagery in the poem as the narration brings out some visual Im- imagery of every action of the person and the sequence are well built successfully in the reader's mind and he has made the ghost ghostly environment by mentioning the, its elements such as hunchback moon and spirits or calling so this is the analysis of the poem humorous poem true ceremony and thanks for hearing me
it is a very nice presentation and it will be a, a significant presentation among the presenters that have gathered here. Next, I would like to invite Ms. Archana to deliver her presentation. Good day to you all. Today, I would like to speak about the poem, War is Kind. War is Kind was written by the famous poet, uh, Stephen Grace, who was born in uh, 1871. He's an American poet. Uh, he had firsthand experience as a war reporter. So he discloses many incidents uh, that can be the reality of the war uh, in this poem very uh, beautifully. Um, Throughout the history of the war, uh, world, uh, so many wars have been held. But if it is asked how many wars uh, have been won, there will be no answer because all wars have left um, deaths and destructions. All wars have, all wars have left um, suffering, losses, and pains uh, to the human beings. And so the war uh, has been a um, curse to the world since the ancient civilization with the name of the god rivalry dominant competition and power the innocent lives are pushed into the miserable life for the um, without being shown a mercy or sympathy for the silly reasons uh, so the poet uh, shows the true background that can be behind the uh, war in this poem um, in the title, War is Kind, the poet has used to this poem very wonderfully. Um, this is an, uh, actually, this is an irony because uh, all we know that um, war is unkind. So um, here the poet uh, uses this uh, title to, uh, to show the dark reality of the war. Um, to show the reality of the war, the poet has brought three people in front, in front of our eyes uh, whose pleasurable lives are, uh, have been made a question mark because they directly depend on the people uh, who were violently and horribly killed in the war field. Um, the poet uh, consults the first stanza as, uh, as if he consults a maiden who can be the lover of the uh, soldier. Uh, in here we can understand that um, before uh, she has started her life, her life came to the end. So uh, her um, pay, uh, uh, pain is uh, cannot be explained by the, by the words because um, all we know that uh, many uh, girls uh, have a lot of dreams about their future life. But uh, here um, uh, her life came to the end uh, very quickly. So uh, this is an unbearable, unbearable pain, not only her, but also the uh, listeners. Uh, the um, poet mentions that uh, innocent youth as uh, little souls because they are the gender buds and haven't seen the pleasurable side of the life. Um, they are uh, highly attracted by the smart military uniforms, um, booming drums of the regiment and heroism. They are engaged in the war and uh, their dreams of colorful life are cursed uh, without being smelled. The buds of flowers without blooming fall on the earth. Uh, they are cheated by the uh, people who are respon responsible for the war. Uh, um, war mongers always use enchanting words uh, to brainwash the uh, young soldiers because they are hot blooded, immature, and innocent. So they are highly attracted by the heroic nature and um, sacrifice their life uh, without knowing anything. Um, uh, these young men are cheated by the people who are responsible for the war. They harvest the uh, benefits of the war as money, fame, uh, name, and authority. But nobody knows the reality behind the war. Uh, they enjoy their life standing on the grave of the soldiers. Uh, Jutta said that they are the backbone of the country. But uh, the people who, uh, who are in power never realize that uh, they are uh, also souls having the disease of affection and love. Um, they make the war. Uh, um, uh, they make the world um, in a um, unkind. And next, uh, the poet uh, show, uh, says these men were born to drill and die. Actually, this is the motto of the every soldiers. Uh, in the battlefield, soldiers are expected uh, 
um, either to kill the enemy or get killed by the enemy. Uh, this phrase clearly shows the uh, reality of the war because um, uh, soldiers are uh, killed as the um, animals are uh, killed in the slaughter house for food. Uh, this is actually against the humanity. And then the poet shows the child who lost his father. Father is the only hope for children and their future and family. But they also sacrifice their uh, sacrifices their valuable life, um, leaving his child as an orphan. Um, leaving um, the future life of the child who lost his father will be question mark. Uh, it will be the story of the one whose eyes are tied and left in the middle of the forest where ferocious wild animals are waiting to hunt. Um, who will be the supportive uh, to the uh, future life of the child. It will have to face various problems in the cruel society also. And so the poet criticizes the hypocrisy of the world. Then the uh, poet uh, shows the condition of a mother who is in helpless because she lost her um, beloved son in the battlefield. Mother whose heart hung humble as a button. Uh, what is the juice of the... Uh, Bright splendid shroud by covering her dead son. Her remaining life without her son will be dark and lonely. Uh, who will be, be supportive to the mother? Uh, no one can answer uh, this question. The poet uh, then shows um, how the flag sweetly um, flies, uh, spreading its bright light in all directions in order to uh, indicate the glory of the country. Nobody knows the reality. Uh, real situation and true uh, background behind the war. Um, innocent blood and uh, lives of the Jews are the main reason uh, for the victory of the war that cannot be accepted by the people. So, um, uh, blazing flag of the regiment, um, this phrase uh, clearly shows the um, uh, inhuman action. Uh, great is the battle gold uh, and his kingdom. Uh, here the poet says this in a sarcastic manner because um, the god must be a ready made predictor, but here he, his kingdom is full of dead bodies of the uh, innocent soldiers. So um, the poet shows the, the colors attitude of the war leaders uh, throughout this um, poem. Uh, now we analyze the, uh, analyze the themes of the poem. The first theme is hypocrisy of the war. Um, uh, and next is the virtuality of the war, then, uh, then the colors attitude of the war leaders. Um, uh, these themes are uh, clearly expressed uh, throughout the um, literary techniques. Uh, the first uh, technique is the verbal irony, because well, here the poet mentions war is kind, but we know that war is unkind. So this is verbal irony. And then he also uses do not weep, war is kind. This is the repetition. Um, here the poet uh, uses this uh, repetition to emphasize the um, unbearable pains of the people. And he also shows the hypocrisy uh, that created by the war mongers. Then he visualizes the many in incidents. Uh, for an example, um, death of the father and death of the son and the lover, uh, he uh, who mm, threw his wild hands towards the sky. Uh, he uh, visualizes the many incidents um, to show the reality of the world. Then he also uses onomatopoeia effect. Uh, booming drum is an onomatopoeia. Uh, uh, actually, booming drums uh, gives an energy energy to the minds of the soldiers uh, to um, engage in the war. And then he uses simile. Uh, hung humble as a button is a simile. Uh, there's no juice uh, uh, a, of a button in the splendid shroud. Then uh, he also uses alteration, drill and die, great code, uh, other alterations. And then he also uses a metaphor, little south as a metaphor. We are actually um, little south uh, mentions the um, innocent soldiers. So he also uses metaphor to convey his theme uh, very beautifully. Thank you. Thank you, Arjuna, for your mind-blowing presentation about War is Kind. Next, I am going to present in the topic of To the Evening Star.
A great warm good evening to you all. Today I am going to present about the poem to the evening star. To the evening star poem was written by the greatest artistic and literary geniuses of romantic era, William Blake. William Blake was born in Soho, Soho England in November 1757. In that way, the poem to the evening star reflects the main theme of innocence versus experience. On the other hand, he also significantly expresses the advantages and disadvantages of the nature. Here, William Blake use, uses powerful imagery and metaphor in Tau Fairhead Angel, personified Venus as, a, as an angel with Tau uh, and as Tau and Tai. And he used symbols too, such as the lion, the bull, uh, the lion, the bull, flock, and angel. Here he also uses sound dev devices too. In the poem, Blake uses many themes such as the duality of nature as seen to be innocent and evil, prey and predator, the nature, Venus as a protector, beauty and mystery of the nature, etc. This is an ode and sonnet type of poem to Venus. And this poem contains 14 lines. In the starting of the, of the poem, Blake introduced the evening star. We must first understand it's not a star, but, it, but a planet whose symbolism deserves to be elevated thus. In that way, the evening star shining back on in that twilight gap between night and day, and who seeing its beauty through, told rightly that this star ma must be divine. We all know that Venus is a goddess of love, purity, beauty, fertility in Greek mythology. In that way, we can say that this poem was based on Greek and Roman mythologies. In that period, many of the English and European people believed that Venus is their guardian in the dark time of the day. Now we can enter the enter to the line by line analysis. Tau fair haired angel of the evening. This planet, the icon of Venus, goddess of love, and from whom it derived its modern name is offered by William Blake with the tribute over which meticulous allegory has been devoted. Here, Evening Star refers, refers of nature as well as nature provides a great mind relax and love, gives a physical and spiritual growth. And next three lines, now wills the sun rests on the mountains. The light, tie bright torch of love, the radiant crown put on and smile upon our evening bed. When the sun sets behind the mountains, the star appears in the sky. According to the poet, the star lights the bright torch of love at the time. So the evening star is symbol of light and love too. Moreover, the speaker requests the angel to put on her radiant crown and smile upon their evening bed. Here, Blake uh, describes the evening bed as the bad experience of the people at the at the night time of of day to day life. Here, the poet metaphorically compares the star to Mon Monoj who protects protects the world in the morning. As the line 59, smile on our loves, and while thou draws the blue curtains of the sky, scatter thy silver dew on every flower that shuts its sweet eyes. In timely sleep, let, they, let thy west wind sleep on. The lake speaks silence with thy glimmering eyes. Here, the poet William Blake as the evening star which hurts the night, metaphorically referred to as the 
blue curtains to scatter her silver dew which is not unlike the blessed holy water during the sleeping hours in what seems a plain gesture of blowing for protection in the last five lines uh, if we see see them and both the dust with silver soon full soon dost to withdraw the then the wolf rages wide wide and then the lion glares through the dun forest the fleeces of our flocks are covered with thy sacred dew protect them with the with thy influence in the poem the poet requests the angel of evening star to wash the dust with the silver the poet goes on to explain the that when the evening star withdraws and day and the day becomes night the evil that is represented by wolves auditions run rampant he pleads with the goddess to protect our flocks as did as this as did jesus who was a shepherd he wants humanity protected with the stars sacred dew once again an allusion to holy water which is to say water that is blessed clearly this poem with this with its many literary techniques is masterpiece of enigmatic verse it is up to us the readers to decipher as is as is relevant in the end we can say that here in the poem black beauty beautifully details duality of the nature such that he explained the good side of the nature by describing the venus and he also describes the dark side of the nature by the lion glows wolf rages uh, from the dark forest in the poem blake also grows the spiritual mind among the readers thank you all for listening me have a nice day next i would like to invite ms pradayani to speak speak on her topic good evening all of you today i am going to talk about the lumber room by saki the lumber room by saki is a short story written by the outstanding british novelist uh, and a uh, short story writer called hector kimondo uh, he is the he wrote many british uh, novels uh, in this prose um, uh, the, in this prose is uh, indicate the sahi's childhood experience and uh, and reflect the real experience uh, here autobiographical elements used in this uh, prose and uh, unfortunately his uh, his Uh, he lost his parents and lived with lived with his aunt it is one of the unpleasant experience uh, of of the of the child because parents are the real lovers of a child uh, and uh, no one can uh, give the uh, give the um, love as their parents um Pierre's uh, love is uh, the truly, uh, truly selfless and uh, forgiving. Uh, children are naughty by nature, uh, and uh, they like to experiment, touch, handle, uh, and do many things. Um, but uh, in this, um. in this uh, race um, maybe break in the uh, nicholas uh, sahi's life because the uh, because his aunt is uh, arrogant and strict woman 
she doesn't give any freedom to uh, Sa uh, Sahi. Uh, so it creates uh, sympathy to, to the child. Um, Nicholas is a protagonist of the story. Protagonist means uh, him. Um, uh, the children were driven to a beach uh, at Jack Borot, but uh, Nicholas were not uh, were not at the beach because uh, he um, be, um, be, because it is the punishment uh, for the Nicholas because he do he did something wrong. Uh, and that that morning uh, breakfast is wholesome bread and milk. Um, um, he didn't eat that. Uh, his aunt uh, scolded him. He said, uh, "He said, aunt, there was a rock in in his uh, bread and milk." Um, and uh, the aunt said, "Nicholas, how is it possible? Uh, how did the frog uh, come into the milk?" Nicholas cried in. Uh, Cried and didn't eat. Um, aunt um, and uh, uh, but uh, here really the frog in in his bread and milk because uh, Nicholas uh, caught the bread himself and uh, uh, put it in the milk. Uh, Nicholas gave me a description uh, and coloration for the frog. But uh, all day and wise the digital agree. Uh, the narrator want to describe by the aunt uh, all day and wise. Um, el uh, elders should not uh, come come a conclusion faster. So the elders must think so much. And uh, uh, elders always think that what they know are uh, correct. Uh, here, the diction disgrace uh, indicate um, his lost population. He aunt not uh, see the frog. It is a mistake, and uh, he didn't agree, uh, and uh, she didn't believe. In the uh, beginning of the story, uh, Nicholas says, uh, Nicholas says, uh, apart from the other children. Uh, and it says that he's uh, he's not only different from uh, from other children, uh, but also he's more important and interesting character in this post. Uh, the lumber room is written by written in twentieth century in England. Uh, in that time, uh, children were expected to always. Uh, Best, uh, based on their behavior in uh, unquestion, uh, unquestionably obey Adam. Um, uh, but uh, the story's protagonist, uh, uh, protagonist uh, the boy, boy named uh, Nicholas, uh, he, didn't, uh, he didn't follow this uh, way. Um, through the story, uh, Sahi is uh, critical of the aunt, uh, and uh, he describes her as uh, being a small-minded bully. bully. Uh, um, in this uh, story, portray much more sympathetic matter. Uh, uh, when Nicholas uh, tell his aunt. Uh, is surprised to hear it. Nicholas says, uh, uh, he told you about twice, but you weren't, were not listening. Uh, you often don't listen when, when we tell you important things. With this, the story emphasizes that the children uh, are voiceless and uh, powerless under the arms. Um, uh, uh, um, when the aunt uh, droplets into the water tank and asks Nicholas uh, for for the help, uh, he promising him a treat of strawberry jam uh, if uh, if he won't uh, if he won't. Um, but um, 
uh, in one of the time the aunt uh, says uh, there are uh, no jam uh, in uh, in the uh, jar but uh, he he know there are four jams uh, of it in the store cupboard because uh, he looked uh, Nicholas reveals his aunt that he is aware of her lies and uh, lies. Um, uh, in the uh, uh, Nicholas is a quick witted boy, uh, and also um, throughout the story, uh, Sahi. Sahi's uh, fantasy uh, imagination as a source of um, wonder and uh, contrast, contrast uh, with the aunts glaring uh, in that department. Uh, um, uh, Sahi, uh, uh, Nicholas uh, in, implicates tricks and uh, aunties characterized as a dishonest uh, person. Um, um, the aunt is uh, one of the uh, antagonists of the story. Nicholas Cousins um, seems to be only adult responsible for the four children and her child. Um, he uh, in, in this story, uh, the Lambaru symbolizes the wildness imagination and aunt's uh, decision to bar the children from uh, this room uh, represents uh, her priority and order, orderness. Uh, in upper class English paper, the, uh, the Lambaru was used uh, to store extra furniture and unused. Uh, un, uh, Unused uh, kitchen kitchen aids. Um, it, it is uh, it says uh, the uninteresting uh, room is described as a place of great mystery and uh, wonder in the story. Um, um, uh, finally, I would like to say uh, children uh, uh, children should be treated possibly. Uh, thank you for hearing. Thank you, Pradhani, for your wonderful speech. Next, I would like to invite Master Barjan to deliver his presentation. <laughs> 